McDonald's, an all-American establishment that brings joy, happiness, and obesity to many. While a lot of us look back upon the place fondly, they have been no stranger to crimes, lawsuits, and controversy over the years by any means. Today, let's look into a selection of a good number of the lesser-known McDonald's-related incidents in recent years. Today, we're going to get a good look underneath the Great Golden Arches to find out what's going on down there. While you might find a good roach or two while looking under the counters, looking under the roof itself is a good way to find a seemingly never-ending litany of crimes. But, you know, with how many McDonald's there are and how often they're frequented, it's only natural that there's going to be some crimes popping up at some point. So let's look into what are honestly only a drop in the bucket of some of the weirder cases out there. Settle in, grab yourself some Mac Nuggets, and get ready for the carnage. Something about McDonald's really seems to get people in the threatening mood, and it seems that a lot of people come packing heat to pick up their Happy Meals. Rather than simply generalize, let's start with a very specific example, that of a woman arrested in Cocoa, Florida after an unpleasant interaction with McDonald's staff. A 26-year-old woman named Quavi Young pulled up into the McDonald's drive-thru and began to speak with an employee through the speaker. Quavi came to request a meal that wasn't even on the menu. Naturally, she was told that this order wouldn't be possible as they didn't even carry that item. Well, Quavi wasn't having it. She pulled up to the window where one would normally pay and started to demand that her order be fulfilled. When the employee told her that it couldn't be done and asked her what her problem was, Quabi whipped out a handgun and began to threaten the young woman, telling her that she would, quote, push her shit back. Then she drove up to the second window where you would normally get your food and waited for her order that she wasn't going to receive. That order wasn't going to be coming. Instead, she got a visit from the police instead, who pulled up pretty quickly. The police found that she had a black Smith & Wesson M&P gun with a drum-style magazine, one that could hold up to 50 rounds, sitting in her passenger seat. Employees at the McDonald's told police that this wasn't the first time that they had had to call them about this woman, although they didn't provide details as to what she had done the first time around. Police officers arrested Quavi and took her into jail, booked on three charges, aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, open carry of a weapon, and driving with a suspended license. She admitted to the police that she knew her license was suspended, but she really needed some of that McDonald's. As you might have been able to gauge from this story, there's nothing Florida loves more than McDonald's and guns, and hell, it seems like cookies too. Quavi wasn't the only woman in Florida to pull a gun on a McDonald's employee, not by a long shot. Similar as to in the first story, a 24-year-old woman named Amari Bente Hendricks pulled up into a McDonald's drive-thru and started arguing with employees. Apparently at the time, employees were required to ask you about their rewards program, and if they didn't, you were entitled to get a free cookie from them. Well, it appears that Amari was well aware of this rule and caught the employee in a gotcha moment. Not having been asked about the rewards program, she demanded her cookie. It seems that the employee wasn't allowed to give her one, which sent Amari into a blind rage. She quickly became irate, screaming at the employee, demanding to speak to the manager, and then screaming at the manager too. Demanding a cookie, she pulled out her gun and aimed it at the staff. She inserted a magazine into the gun and racked the slide, showing that she meant business. The manager backed out of the drive through window and stepped back into the main restaurant looking for cover. Another employee was stuck in place, looking directly into the barrel of the gun, realistically facing the chance that he might lose his life over a free cookie. The rest of the employees locked up the restaurant. Noticing this, Amari pulled her car around to the front and made her way up to the front door. One of the younger employees failed to fully lock up properly and she managed to make her way in. Amari then grabbed the employee by the arm at gunpoint, forcing him out of the building and hitting him multiple times, scratching him on his face and neck before he finally broke free. The police arrived on scene and quickly caught Amari. She admitted to owning a gun but said that she never made any threats with it. She said that she was simply involved in, in her own words, a tussle with one of the employees. She said that she always kept her gun unloaded. When the police asked why it was fully loaded and ready to go, she said that she didn't know. Police checked the surveillance footage from the drive through and although the quality wasn't great, it did show her holding what appeared to be a gun in her right hand, inserting something into it, and holding it up to the drive through window. 
She is now facing two counts of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon without intent to kill, among several other charges. Unfortunately, not all of these cases ended with mere threats. Some of them had some weight to them. Out in Brooklyn, a disagreement between a McDonald's patron, 20-year-old Michael Morgan, and an employee, 23-year-old Matthew Webb, broke out into a brawl. This all started because Michael's mother had apparently gotten some cold fries with her order and Michael was there to stick up for her. His mother, on FaceTime with the restaurant, previously demanded to speak to the manager and complain. The manager, seeing the absurdity of this all, began to laugh. Michael, upon hearing this, was furious and made his way out to the restaurant. The argument ended up spilling out onto the sidewalk where Michael began to punch Matthew and beat him. After not too long, he pulled out his gun and shot Matthew in the neck. Police arrived, arresting Michael there on the spot. Matthew was rushed to the hospital where, unfortunately, he was declared brain dead and put on life support. After several days, he passed away. It was then assumed that Michael would definitely be facing charges of murder. Oddly enough, Michael's mother, the woman who got the cold fries, wasn't at all appalled by what he had done. She reportedly told the police, he gotta do what he gotta do. It seems that Michael had gotten the gun from his neighbor, his girlfriend. Now, 18-year-old Camelia Dunlap is also being charged with felony weapon possession. The community held a vigil for Matthew, who was apparently a stand-up citizen that a lot of people knew fondly. He was a polite young guy working two jobs to put himself through college while volunteering as a church organist whenever he could. Surprisingly though, this story wasn't over. This investigation led to yet another revelation. It wasn't a big shocker that this wasn't Michael's first run-in with the police. In fact, he had a good 13 prior arrests on his record with charges including grand larceny, assault, and theft. He also had a good number of sealed arrest cases from his time as a juvenile. The real shocker was that he would go on to confess to another murder after his arrest. This was the 2020 murder of 28-year-old Kevin Holloman. Michael said that he had shot Kevin by mistake, being after his cousin when he shot him instead. That case coincidentally only occurred just a few blocks away from the McDonald's in this incident. While some people out there will get incredibly rabid over some cold fries, some people will lose their cool over something as simple as the sauce. In fact, out in Washington, D.C., we have the case of a 16-year-old girl who threw her life away, as well as the life of another, over some sweet and sour sauce. Out at this Washington, D.C. McDonald's, a 16-year-old who hasn't been named due to her age got into a fight with her friend over said sauce. She, the victim, and one other girl exited a car and went into the restaurant where a fist fight broke out. The victim, Naima Ligon, was the third wheel who wasn't part of the fight. In fact, she stepped between the other two girls in order to break it up and calm them down. Well, the attacker didn't take too kindly to this. She took out a knife and stabbed Naima multiple times in her stomach and heart for daring to intervene. Naima was rushed to the hospital, but eventually she lost the fight and was pronounced dead. The police arrived and subdued the attacker, taking her in. She fully admitted to killing the girl in a fight over condiments. The case eventually went to trial where her lawyer attempted to argue that she had stabbed her friend in self-defense, but the evidence clearly showed otherwise. The judge herself was disturbed by the whole incident, saying, This was really over sweet and sour sauce? It's very hard to make sense of. Naima's mother was also confused, in disbelief that her daughter was killed by someone she had known since elementary school over something so stupid, saying, I still don't understand how someone who called herself a friend could do something so heinous. She hoped that the attacker would be charged as an adult, but unfortunately that wasn't the case. She was sentenced to five years in juvenile detention for what she did, which was the maximum they could impose in these conditions. She will be released when she turns 21. The victim's mother, disappointed, said, Five years is not enough, but at least it is the maximum. I hope she is rehabilitated by then. Her father, likewise, said that this sentence wasn't justice, but was, in his own words, a form of justice. Luckily though, not all of these cases end in death. It might not be much consolation, but some of them only end with a mere beating. In Milwaukee, a 19-year-old woman, Debreka Jones, pulled up to the McDonald's drive-thru, ordering a bacon breakfast sandwich. Well, she didn't get it. Instead, she was handed the wrong order. 
After handing the bag with the wrong order to the customer, the employee at the drive-thru turned around to walk away, only to feel the bag of food hit her in the back of the head. What the fuck is this? I didn't order no sausage biscuit, screamed Abreka. She pulled her car over and came into the restaurant, coming up to the counter to complain to an employee there that their order wasn't right. The manager then apologized and offered her a refund. Debreka accepted the refund but came back to confront the manager again for some reason, this time coming behind the counter. That was when a 17-year-old employee tried to get in between them and break up the fight before it escalated anymore. Well, Debreka wasn't having it. She grabbed the girl and threw her into the fry station, cracking her head on the machine and then on the floor. Then, Debreka fled the restaurant. The employee was taken to the hospital, feeling dizzy and nauseated and treated for a concussion. With the CCTV footage, it wasn't long before Debreka was caught. The police arrested her and charged her with battery and disorderly conduct, two misdemeanors. She was, for a little more than two weeks, in the House of Correction and was released on probation. She's no longer allowed to go to McDonald's as a condition of her release. It appears that she now works as a caregiver, according to LinkedIn. When it comes to McDonald's, the sandwiches are one thing for sure, but it's the chicken nuggets that are truly serious business. A 12-year-old girl in Harlem was eating some McDonald's, chicken nuggets to be precise, when one of her classmates, a boy her age, noticed her eating and came over to bum a nugget off of her. She told him no, which he wasn't very happy to hear. He asked her one more time, to which she responded again, no. Well, the boy wasn't about to let this slide. He started stalking her and, when she finally left the restaurant, he decided to follow her out. He followed her to the 103rd Street, number 6 train subway station. When it looked like she was alone, he approached her, pulled out a gun, and again demanded she provide a nugget. She refused once again. He put the gun to her head, but she smacked it away and told him to leave her alone. She then simply boarded the train and left. The boy got on the train as well, where she saw him showing the gun to another kid. The next day, she told school officials who, in turn, told the police. The boy was soon arrested and taken into custody for attempted robbery. They didn't find the weapon, but the case was sent over to the family court in the end for them to pursue action. While some people out there may be ready and willing to kill someone over some chicken nuggets, some people would like to go even farther. Some would prefer a nuclear option. One man out in Iowa, Robert Goitzer Jr., went through a McDonald's drive-thru and decided to order some good old nuggies for himself. When he got home, he realized that the employees had forgotten to include his dipping sauce. He was irate. He called up the McDonald's and flew into a rage and began demeaning the employee on the phone. He then threatened to not only punch that employee in the face, but to come down to the restaurant and blow it up with a bomb. The restaurant took down his phone number and the name on his caller ID and called the police. They arrested him out at his home and he admitted fully that yes, he had threatened to punch a man and blow up a restaurant over some dipping sauce. He was taken into custody and charged with one count of making a false report of an explosive or incendiary device, a Class D felony. He was thrown into jail, but he soon posted a $5,000 bond and was released. Robert waived his right to an early hearing. It seems that he's looking at up to either five years in prison or possibly a fine of over $10,000. Sometimes it isn't even the food, though. Sometimes it's the drinks. I mean, have you ever wondered what would happen if you bought a cup of water and then filled it up with a soda anyway? Well, you might find the answer to that in this case. In Springdale, Arkansas, an 18-year-old man tried just that. Cody Morris, along with two other unnamed young men, went through the drive-thru and ordered nothing but three ice waters with their food. They had a little scheme in mind. They would get that water for cheap in the drive-thru, then come into the store and get soda as a free refill. What could go wrong, they thought. Well, the answer to that is a lot. The manager came out and confronted the three men, demanding that they return the sodas they had unjustly filled. Two of the men relented and did just that, but Cody did not. Cody ran back out to his car with the soda, not willing to give it up. The manager followed him out, attempting to take the keys out of the ignition and failing. Then, the manager, incredibly dedicated to not losing this $1 drink for some reason, jumped in front of Cody's car in order to prevent him from leaving where he was struck. The police were called and they soon found Cody parked at a nearby bowling alley, enjoying his drink. They charged him with felony robbery and threw him into the Washington County Detention Center. 
So how about we look into a case that's almost the exact opposite, where someone does get a coke and they are very unhappy with it. Well, let's just say that the man and his family in this case definitely have a pretty good reason to be unhappy about it. A young family man in Utah named Trevor Walker went through the McDonald's drive through with his wife and kids, ordering two Happy Meals, two chicken sandwiches, and two Diet Cokes. Once they got home, Trevor sat down and began drinking his Coke while watching his kids. This was when he started feeling very strange. First, he lost control of his fingers. Then, he started to panic as he lost feeling in his arms and legs and started to dissociate. He said, as I started to shift my body, I started to sense almost like a lapse in time, like between the time I would move my hands, there was a delay. When that feeling started, he texted his wife, Something is very wrong with me. I am having sensations in my arms and everything is moving slowly. I'm feeling scared. I don't know what to do. Shortly after sending that text, he blacked out and collapsed into a nearby table before falling to the floor. His wife quickly came back home and took him to the hospital. While waiting at the hospital, she compared her Diet Coke to his, noticing that his drink had some little speckles and some kind of film across the top, something neither of them had noticed due to the lid. Trevor's wife called the police and reported the drink. They took it out to the crime lab. There, they confirmed that it had been spiked with a heroin substitute called Suboxone, a combination of buprenorphine and naloxone. It is, indeed, a film-like substance that dissolves in your mouth. To make things worse, it seems that it had a negative interaction with some of Trevor's prescribed medication, which is what put him into this condition. Luckily, Trevor recovered, and he decided to sue both McDonald's and Coca-Cola for what had happened. It seems that the lawsuit is still ongoing, but it's unclear as to whether or not it will actually go anywhere, with McDonald's saying that they have no control over the day-to-day -day actions of each of their employees. In response, it's being argued that they should have been providing adequate supervision and training. McDonald's has since said that this is optional. We'll just have to see where this goes. While some people do sue McDonald's over matters that one might find reasonable, there are plenty of other people out there who are trying to get money out of the massive corporation for things that you might call a little frivolous. One good example is this case in which a married couple attempted to sue McDonald's for $5 million over getting some cheese that they didn't order. Their argument was that getting a burger with cheese costs slightly more than getting one without, so McDonald's is unjustly ripping off their customers by providing cheese by default with a small upcharge. So these two deserve $5 million for it. They said, these products cannot be purchased either separately or part of a value meal without the customer being overcharged and being compelled to pay for unwanted and undelivered cheese. McDonald's is being unjustly enriched by these practices because it receives payment for cheese it does not deliver to its customers. McDonald's themselves put out a statement saying, We do not believe the claims in this lawsuit have legal merit. The advertised quarter pounder burger comes with cheese. We try to accommodate our customers' requests by allowing them to customize their orders, such as a quarter pounder with no cheese. They also stated that the menus have clearly laid out set prices. Well, after months of battling, the judge threw out the lawsuit with prejudice, meaning they can't file another lawsuit on this topic again. So far, a lot of these cases have involved hatred, violence, and trickery. Well, not all of the McDonald's-related crimes out there involve hatred. Some involve love, like self-love. A good example would be the case of a 61-year-old man in New York who went to McDonald's to use their Wi-Fi for a little self-fulfillment. He hopped into the restaurant and pulled out his tablet, turning on some good old pornography and having a nice leisurely watch. Police were called on the man, Todd McMillan, of Bayshore, New York, after employees complained that this wasn't the first time he'd been caught blasting porn in their store and kicked out. It appears that McDonald's was his usual viewing grounds. Todd was arrested and charged with disorderly conduct. While Todd was out there playing with his own nuggies, some were playing with the nugs of others. In fact, out in Connecticut, one young couple in their 20s was arrested for doing just that very thing. Rory Clark, 27, and Kimberly Onorado, 28, were seen by McDonald's employees getting it on in their car in broad daylight in the front seat after getting their meal. Even worse, they had a six-year-old kid who was in the back seat, completely awake and aware of what was going on. 
When employees saw that the child was not only there but also watching, they called the police immediately. The police rushed out and found a partially naked woman in the front seat, seemingly grinding upon a man. Police were shocked to see the young kid alert and awake, but seemingly undisturbed by what was going on. The couple told the police that they were just cuddling, with their pants off, at a McDonald's. It goes without saying that the police didn't buy this explanation. Both of them were charged with second-degree breach of peace and impairing the morals of a minor. Online, at least, it isn't clear what happened to the child afterwards. Both of the adults were thrown into jail and later released on a $5,000 bond. Now, it's admittedly not my intention to get you to hate McDonald's, but if the sight of people jacking it and getting it on right there on the premises doesn't prevent you from going, maybe something like this will. In Coulomb Beach in Australia, a man named Anton Valley was digging into his lovely McDonald's burger one night at about 2 in the morning after having a good few drinks. Being dark out and having a pretty good buzz, he didn't really get a clear look at his quarter pounder. If he did, he might have noticed that the thing was pretty raw. He got about three good bites in before he noticed that the burger tasted a little funny. He pulled out his phone and used the flashlight to see two patties that seemed like they hadn't even been cooked. Maybe partially, but the meat was clearly still raw. This was when he said that his stomach was, in his own words, wrecked. He felt a strange sensation in his throat and began to projectile vomit all over the place. He started sweating profusely and shaking all over. He called into the store to tell them what had happened, complaining that they sold him a raw burger. They asked him to hold on to the burger until he felt up to bringing it back. He did as they said and was offered both a refund and a replacement. Needless to say, he wasn't in the mood for a replacement burger. Did you really think that it would just be one person getting sick from McDonald's? Uh, try hundreds. About 400 in this case. In Illinois in 2018, there was a huge breakout of cases of explosive diarrhea that were all traced back to McDonald's salads. Now, in Illinois, there were a good 109 cases alone, but this was an incident that was affecting a good portion of the United States, 15 states in total, with the victim count reaching about 400 people over a short period of time. It appears that Illinois and Iowa McDonald's were the greasy ground zero, but the infection quickly spread within days. McDonald's took notice and switched out their salad for another blend shortly after. Three months into the booming butt blasting, McDonald's still didn't know exactly what was going on with their salad that was causing the ailment. It was pretty hard to tell as the infections had been linked to all of the salads they had on their menu, not just one that they could isolate and throw out. All of the victims had contracted what is called cyclopariasis, which is caused by the cyclospora parasite. It's something that will, without a doubt, cause both vomiting and hellish explosive diarrhea for about a week or even as long as a month once you contract it. It kind of goes without saying that many of the people in this video won't be getting McDonald's again anytime soon, and hell, after this video I have to wonder if you might be turned off a little bit as well. I honestly don't have anything against McDonald's in particular, but it's just weird how many McDonald's related crimes I seem to come across accidentally while researching other cases. There are tons of them out there. Like I said before, these are really only a drop in the bucket, so if you have any more that you know of, uh, feel free to put them in the comments and I might make a sequel to this video at some point. Special thanks to a website called Law and Crime, which compiled a list that gave me a pretty good jumping off point for this research. Now, let's go get some burgers and call it a day. Once again, thank you for watching my video. If you found it interesting, please give it a like. It really helps me out in the algorithm, and feel free to subscribe if you want to see more content like this. If you don't mind, go ahead and follow me on social media. If anything were to ever happen to this channel, or hey, maybe if there's even any updates, that would probably be the best way to hear about it. If you're interested, I've started uploading these videos in podcast form as well, on platforms like Spotify and Apple. I always appreciate it when people sign up for my Patreon as well. There you can get videos early, ad-free, and uncensored. Channel memberships are back up too, and you can get the same benefits there as well. Once again, this has been your host Kyle. Thank you, and good night.